What's up, guys? Welcome back to Drag Boss Garage for episode 51, the mid-lift theory. So in this video, what I'm going to do is kind of show you the principles and the theory behind measuring your rocker arm geometry utilizing the mid-lift theory. Now, I read about it, and it's kind of complicated when you get into measuring the diameter of the roller tip and then the valve stem and all these different measurements to try to figure that out. So I kind of streamlined it, and basically what I'm trying to show you in this video is just a te technique that I got from Russell Saliba on measuring rocker arm geometry. Now with mid-lift theory, what they're saying is with net lift, with regular valve springs that you're going to use on the motor, you measure the net lift, so divide it by two, and that's your mid-lift that you're going to work with. I'm just kind of showing you how I look at it and I kind of looked at Scott Foxwell's video and kind of went from that also. But what I found was difficult was getting the perpendicular relationship between the valve stem tip and the rocker arm trunnion and that angle. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That's the part that's tough to get. You know, in theory, you want to have that roller tip in the center of the valve and move the least amount as possible because every extra movement is taken away from the lift, the duration, and the velocity of the cam. So you're losing some of your cam if your geometry's off. So it's I've seen people talk about the contact patch and I, and I did measure that to kind of get an idea what it, mine looked like. And they always say you want the thinnest patch no matter what because that's the least amount of movement for the rocker arm tip. So keep that in mind. But there's an article that I read and it's by Jim Miller. That's kind of who I went by. If you do a search on mid-lift, you're going to find a ton of articles. You know, my suggestion is read through the information and see how it applies to your situation. With yellow terra rocker arms and shaft rocker arms, to move the contact patch, you use shims underneath it, not a longer push rod. And that's an important factor to think about with the system that you're using. So here's me demonstrating measurement of the mid-lift theory. So I hope you can use some of the information that I'm showing you, at least demonstrating how you use the laser-guided system from Russ Saliba. Check it out. What we did is I'll set, I got it all set up with no lash. It's at top dead center on zero degrees. So what we'll do is I'll set up the dial indicator. We'll measure the cam, which I think is like seven, it's 744 thousandths to begin with, but you know you're gonna lose some with push rod, parasitic loss and friction, frictional losses. Then you go ahead and you zero it. Now, what we'll do is we'll measure and see what we have for max lift at the valve, net, instead of load lift like we did before, and that was like 429 thousandths. So in theory, once we get whatever it is, cut it in half, it should be a 90 degree angle from the valve stem to the rocker arm trunnion. You'll see what I'm talking about. So let's move it over in the direction of the rotation. The exhaust valve is starting to open. I'll come up here to get a little bit of a better handle on it. And now the rocker arm for the intake is starting to open. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, twenty. So that measures 722 lift. And that's pretty good. I just want to measure. The clearance I have in between the push rod and the rocker arm, 28. So about 28 thousandths, that's pretty good. I'd like 30, but 28 will work. So let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this at mid lift, which is gonna be 722 divided by two, which is, what is it, two, 361. So 361 thousandths is going to be mid-lift. So let's put this back. We'll go to 361 thousandths. Hopefully it stays in position. So there's one, two, 361. 361 thousandths. Perfect. So in theory, this should be mid-lift. I should have a 90 degree angle between the valve stem and the rocker arm trunnions for the roller tip and the trunnion here. So let's set up my little deal. 
Now this is just a regular, this aluminum timing cover for a Cleveland. It just seems to fit good on this, how I have it set up. And I kind of already mocked it up, but the, my little secret here is a secret I got from Russell Saliva from Down Under. Russell is a, is a great guy. He knows his Cleveland's better than I do. He's built a lot of motors. I haven't built that many motors compared to him. He's, he's done it on a professional basis. So he knows his Cleveland's. He's like Jason Murphy. You know, those guys know their Cleveland's. And one of the tricks he told me about finding mid-lift theory is if you look at Scott Foxwell has a video and he kind of puts a marker on it and, and uses a, kind of uses a square to draw it in, but you can't beat laser leveling. And that's what Russell Sleeva gave me. So big shout out to you, Russell. Thank you for that. So let's turn these guys on and then we will have to adjust them. So they're not far, but here's this, let's see. The main thing is you want the valve stem, the, the laser right directly in line with the valve stem, not off to the side. So, and it's not that hard with a laser. It's real thing is getting a position on this little stand I made and getting it perfectly lined up. Because remember, it's got, it's not perfect. It's got a little bit of a can to it and you have to compensate for that. The same with here. You've got to kind of bring it down where it needs to be. Because you want that right through the center of that trunnion and right through the center of that rocker are pretty darn close. I don't think you're going to get any better than that. You see that? Right through the trunnion, right through the roller tip center, and the valve spring is lined right up. You can see through the springs that it's on the valve itself. So I know it's dead on. All right, there's a square right there, 90 degrees. That thing's dead on there. And that's the, the theory. Now, if it's not the right position, then you either got to change the shims down. You have to change your push rod length to change that relationship between the roller tip and the center of the valve stem. And I'll show some pictures because I've done it with the bluing too also just to see what it looks like in position. But this... Definitely, you can't beat that laser precision. It's pretty cool when you figure it out compared to the old way with running the rocker arm over bluing machinist die and see how it leaves a pattern. That still gives me some good input, but I put them together as a tool together, and that's what makes a difference in getting them perfect. So you saw the intake. Let's do the exhaust now. And I took off the rocker arm for the simple fact that it's hard to see the laser with that rocker arm in the way. So the net exhaust lift with the actual springs is 708 thousandths. So half of that is 354 thousandths. So what you should do is put the engine at top dead center, go ahead and put the cam at mid lift, which is 354 thousandths. Then check it out and see if you have a 90 degree relationship that the valve tip is perpendicular with the rocker arm. You'll see what I mean. So we'll turn the engine over to 354 thousandths of cam lift on the exhaust and we'll see what it looks like. Now remember, when you got the valve springs on there, you got some tension, so it can get away from you. So pay attention with that. Now the exhaust opens first. So there's 100 thousandths, 200 thousandths, 300, and we want 54. And I can feel some tension, so hopefully it'll relax a little bit. And that's 354 thousandths. So I put up the lasers, line it up, it's at mid lift. That looks right here, and I'm gonna bring the camera in closer. That looks like 90 degrees to me. Here's a little square, like I showed you before. pretty darn perfect and I think you can appreciate that right about there the vertical line is in line with the valve stem itself the horizontal is in line with the trunnion and the exact center and the wheel itself for the rocker arm it's about as close as I'm going to get 
but you can see the theory. You know, like I said, with other systems, such as the pedestal stuff for Cleveland, you got to change the push rod length to change where this rocker arm tip is going in and out across the top of the valve stem. You don't want it going out too far towards the exhaust. You want to keep it tight towards the intake side. Just going past the midline of the valve stem and then right back. So that's my take on rocker arm geometry with the mid-lift theory. Like I said, I wasn't going to go into all the measurements. That's something you could read on your own. But really, it's the technique I wanted to show you. Using this laser system, it makes it so much easier to have things perpendicular and straight. You're not messing around with a Sharpie. Now, you can get these things. I bought these at Home Depot. They're cheap. Probably 10 bucks a piece. Because if you can make sure that rocker arm is going through the least amount of motion, you're going to make sure... You're getting all the specs that cam has you're getting every bit of performance out of that combination add that along with the piston and valve clearance videos and oiling videos you're going to have yourself a pretty healthy clevo so you guys can talk about it on the channel people have done this long before i have you can share your experience of measuring your push rod length and your aspect on valve train geometry. Like I said, trying to keep things moving, trying to progress. You saw the 354. We got a lot of stuff cooking. Stay tuned, because I hear Cleveland's make power.